Mike. That's Toya. And this, this is, is Tech, Tech Beats and Bites. We are getting into the end of the year. It is definitely not Miami weather out here. As you can see, all. we got on hoodies and <laughs> right. jackets. And layers. You don't do layers in Miami. Uh, at all. Got on boots for absolutely no reason, but I had to put on <laughs> You know like, your toes cold. It wasn't like I was walking through the snow or anything, but I still got on boots. But more than anything, I feel you know that you've progressed to another level when someone is mm. way above you at a whole nother level of what you're trying to do. Stratosphere. And they say, hey, I want to be on your show. There must oh. be another guest coming up. <laughs> You're not talking about me. First of all, we got Mr. NBA. We got Mr. Jeff Sanchez on the show. Let's give him a round of Woo. applause for our superhero. Superheroes, yes. give him a round of applause. Welcome to the stage, Jeff. So many of y'all out there, so enthusiastic. I know it's cold, so y'all don't want to pull your hands out. Everybody in Miami, like, do we clap? Can we clap inside <laughs> right. our pockets? Right, my fingers may fall off. It is not happening. So, um, Jeff is. The NBA influencer content, content influencer, which way? I, I, I am the senior manager of influencer content at the NBA. Okay. All right. Official title. Hey, y'all, we made it. We got the NBA. And now after this, we just get LeBron and Amherst and then. <laughs> <laughs> Who's over here? Amherst is right over here, y'all. So God. if she don't get on this camera, just know we gave her the opportunity. Amherst. We're going to get her up here. We're going to get her up here, dog. Free right. drinks, baby. Uh, so, Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about what it is you do with the NBA? Um, Guy talking to the mic like yeah, a yeah, 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 no, no, We won't have y'all level of equipment. You no, got to come no, close. This is just fine. This is just fine. <laughs> uh, my day-to-day -day or like you want the day-to-day -day or you want like the general 30,000-foot view of? Go 30 and then let's take yeah, it Yeah, let's talk the detail. Um, All-Star Weekend is our Super Bowl. Right. So we basically, myself, my team, department, we produce the All-Star Game. Oh. Like that's our big production. Um, specifically for me, the Celebrity Game, uh, Friday night of All-Star Weekend is something that I've managed for the last seven years. Oh, y'all going to stop giving Kevin Hart the MVP now? <laughs> oh, man, he's a legend of the Celebrity <laughs> Game, man. Like, yeah. he's... He's a lifer. Influencer. You're right. right. He brings the, bring the people He bring out. the bodies. He brings bodies. Um, so I'm, you know, partly responsible for booking talent and then working with our television partner, ESPN, to make sure that the live show looks right. Okay. Um, besides that, throughout the year, I mean, we just have a bunch of events. Um, the influencer content is something within the last year that we really started focusing on. Okay. Um... And it's really what's happening in television, how our next generation of viewers are watching and consuming the game. We decided to start working with some influencers that love the NBA and really have been using our content already. Mm. So instead of playing whack-a-mole and kind of trying to catch everybody that's not legally using our content, right. um, we decided to really partner up with some of these people. No, that's cool. Um, that's that's you know, smart. I mean, they're already our number one fans, our biggest advocates, and they're content creators on their own. So we partnered with a company called BBTV um, to really identify like over 200 YouTube channels um, and work with them. Now they get to use our footage, our photos. They have legal access to all of our historic. So basically... Mm -hmm. If Digital Grass was smart enough to break the law with content, we could, hey. we could have been on this platform. I'm not <laughs> suggesting anyone break the law. I'm just saying, uh, just saying, we go for yours. We could have right. went past a little copyright infringement, and we could have made something happen. Right, right, right. But influencer is a term that a lot of people know in marketing and social media. What does influencer mean to the NBA, and what does that look like? <laughs> That's a great question because I think the word influencer. There's a few words: influencer, right. organic. Yep. Uh, that are all kinda, that jargon talk that are thrown mm -hmm. out really loosely. Um, everyone isn't an influencer, right? Um, for us, it's really, you know, on the content side, it's it's content creators that have, have already generated their own buzz. Whether What's that's, that one like the top ten plays and then the top ten dunks I've seen? They do the highlights. Right. They do all that stuff. Um, so clutch talk is a good one that I watch. Yeah, a lot. fillet is another one. Um, mm -hmm. 
so yeah, I mean, the word influencer, I think it's a pretty broad, broad kind of word. Like, right. It can mean a lot of things. Right. But uh, basically, are you influencing the culture? So do you find influencers or they come to you? Um, a little bit of both. Like that's, I like to find, I like to go out, you know, I come from a background of the music industry. So it's a so lot find like finding talent. that hit record. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, so Thank I you. get, you know, I, my energy comes from finding and discovering someone that everyone doesn't know about and helping them play Kingmaker to help them get to another platform. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So one of, I guess one of the questions that has been burning me is uh, at this point, LeBron James is considered an old head because he's been in the game for 15 years. I don't know if he would say that. But yeah, yeah, he won't say it. But I mean, yeah, he he's he's legendary at this mm-hmm. point. So you have this next generation that's coming in that's very much attached to their phones, their likes, or social media. And but I've noticed there still seems to be a little bit of control of what these NBA players are putting out and not putting out. Mm-hmm. But how much did I guess the culture of just having this next generation of younger players? influence some of the decisions of the NBA to focus on social media content? Um, I mean, I think I, I don't like to speak about other sports companies, um, but, you know, in, in a negative way. I, right. I'll take that back. I like to speak about them, but I won't say anything negative. Um, but I do think that, you know, and I'm biased, obviously, we've tried to stay ahead of that curve. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about listening. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, we'd be crazy to not think that the next 18, 19, 20-year-old player isn't, you know, more digitally advanced and on social media a lot more. Um, we're very protective of our brand, right. mm-hmm. of that logo, that Jerry West logo. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we – look, you know, players, they're individuals, and teams are individual teams. They can, you know – pretty much do what they want to do but then we are the parent company that kind of says these are the guidelines like try not to go yeah we that. heard some of that from the guys from miami heat and they right. kind of explain that they have With some free media. reign but there's always that ledge where you you can get there but you don't want to jump off yeah we we definitely practice the don't don't press send right away <laughs> show it to somebody your agent your right. mama somebody should some read it. checks and balances yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. okay so Kind of in the same vein, right? So the NBA looks very different now than it did before. Before, people used to follow teams. Now you follow players. How does that impact the NBA and the content that's created and sort of how you tell the overall story? Especially when it gets into merchandising and ticket sales and everything else. Especially for the Miami fan, the Miami Heat fans that are still upset with LeBron James. That's what she really wants. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I think I think we have it both ways i I think you're right that you know our league probably has more individual um i don't know charismatic athletes that you know are pop culture relevant Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so in other words they have a higher vocabulary than charles barkley (laughs) damn g i'm gonna leave that one alone terrible that's terrible Shots fired. That's what we doing. I had to get one hey, in, Charles. I want hey, you. I it's, just... it's it's worked really well for Charles. So right. I think yeah. he's yeah. laughing to the bank. It, it has. I'm right. um, but go ahead. But but I do think we have a lot of fans too that follow teams. Yeah. yeah. Um, as well. Still. You know, like yeah. Oklahoma. Like this this is there's a fan base in some cities that no matter who comes in and out, they're still they're, loyal. Um, I think you know being. You know, I like to call Miami home as well. I went to high school in Miami, so oh, I think yeah, I can, well, I can claim that North Miami. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, we were gonna get into that. This is a home. very transient city, so very, yeah. You know, and you have people from all over the place. So I think the fan base here is a little different, and they do follow players a little bit more. Uh huh. Um, but I think we try to tell both stories. You know, I think we we like to work with the individual players and tell their story, as well as tell the overall team and league story. So yeah, I think yeah. we do both. Okay. So if we think about, like, culture-wise, I do believe that the NBA and the players are probably some of the biggest cultural influencers. Now, I notice I have it Soccer, on... soccer, too. We're talking about the world. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They, yeah. they get it in. I agree, yeah. World Cup is a huge passion. event. It's like, deadly passion, yeah. but we don't like want to talk about that. Real serious. <laughs> but go ahead. We're on the you, NBA today. Sorry, you missed sorry, that free out. kick? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you have... Uh, Billion dollar tattoo on the side of your neck. Oh wow! 
You yeah. want to talk about that one? I think you need to show the cameras. Yeah. What, what nah, that's nah, looking nah. like. <laughs> you got a billion dollar tattoo on the side of your neck. I got uh-huh. it on my head. Your man filming got it. Uh huh. Do you think the level of passion and obsession that comes with basketball and their brands will get to the point where it matches baseball? Mm. I'm going to keep it funky with you. I think we pass baseball. Mm. Like, okay. I love baseball. I love baseball. Obviously. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I'm saying I've seen that, but I ain't seen a lot of Chicago Bulls or Cleveland tattoos. I've seen them. Really? Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. I've seen LeBron tattoos <laughs> so, on people. You know what? You're right. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> um, you're That's commitment. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I think. Change the jersey for me next month. No, go ahead. <laughs> I think baseball is always going to have its space and, and, you know, as the national pastime. America's game. Yeah. yeah it's like there's not. I, I tell people all the time. There's nothing like going to a baseball park, seeing that grass, walking in, and you can, like, fathers and sons, right. mothers and daughters can have That's a real true. conversation because the pace, you know, I frankly, I think people talk about the pace in baseball is too slow. I think it's perfect. I think that I you think have. I think it's only slow if you've never been to a game. Yeah, and, and, yeah I was going to say, I think it's better at, in person than on TV. At, I can't at do our it on game, TV. right? Or an NFL the game. The playoffs is always live. Right, yeah. that's all, yeah, yeah. NFL game or NBA game, you can't have this kind of conversation because. Nah, you can miss something. Yeah. You're, you're going to miss something. Yeah. Um, so, baseball, I think, should take full advantage of that and use that as their marketing. Like, yo, come here and you can come with your family and have literally a day in the park. Literally. That's a good yeah. angle. It yeah. makes a lot That's of a sense. really good angle they for them. Use that. Yeah, you just gave them. I want a free, piece of that. See, now they about to, <laughs> now they about to come back. <laughs> now you got a whole comeback. You may end up working for the MLB. Enjoy a day at the park. <laughs> That's a good point, though. I like that. You might want to trademark that and buy that website. <laughs> right, 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 right. Come home when we run they can this. They have that, that one website. for free. Okay, yeah. y'all got it, MLB. So. When you, when you think about the aspect of influencer before we start getting into you, because the whole thing is to get to know the people behind the job, uh, one of the last questions I have as far as the NBA, what do you think is one of the next plateaus to reach? Because all I can see coming is definitely we're going to get to a point where there's a NBA, you know, NBA, the app, and you can pretty much watch every game live and all that. I know. But you can do that now. Right. So, mm-hmm. and a lot of people haven't embraced that, but it's there. Mm-hmm. What's going to be the next plateau? How much more interaction can you have? And the reason why I say that is because the NBA team is compromised, I believe, 15 players, correct? Mm-hmm. And with 15 players, you can have a lot more intimate relationships versus baseball or and f- f- football are much larger numbers. What do you think is going to be the next level for uh, social media interaction or just interaction with the players of the NBA? Um, Basically, we ask them for what's going to happen in the future so we know what's what they invest what's into. Next? <laughs> right. That's what I we think, like to talk about. That's what I we're think, trying to get to. I think. Money moves. Um, Can we Bitcoin a player? Is what's <laughs> money moves. We always about money I would be surprised what you could do. Um, I think in, in a broad sense, like region-wise, I'm, I know you asked like more of a techie question, but region-wise, I would think the next place that people should keep their eyes on is India for us. Um, we've done a lot in China. Right, like okay. we're like huge, and that's one of our biggest world markets. Um, but I would look at India as the next place that the NBA goes into, kind of how we did China. Hey, y'all took no- stocks. I got you. You took uh, notes. Um, <laughs> Thanks, baby girls. You're taking notes. We <laughs> <laughs> on the on the like digital tech. Like, I mean, I'm really focused on these YouTubers, man. Like, that's that's where I am, and I think you know we and I I we. Um, really want to work with these with these content creators to so that you view or you watch our game in a different way. Like mm-hmm. you know, people cutting 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 the cord and they're not really watching television. Um, but not only watch I just it. Just went also, to Xfinity today and dropped every box off. It's a wrap. Right. You, know, you got to cut the cord. It's yeah. the wave. Yeah. Right. But not only how we how you consume it, I think it's our are broadcasters too, like how how we display it to you. Right. I think yeah. it needs to be younger and I think that's our next wave. Like mm-hmm. I just think when the cameras get lighter, y'all gonna end up having like body cams inside the jerseys and it's just gonna be just <laughs> Right. Straight P O V yeah, on the like, court. Like be that would shaky. Yeah. I don't know if you can watch it like that, but it doesn't matter. It would be so intense. It's just the, the option to watch it that way. So you can either watch it traditional or you mm-hmm. can watch it on the right. court. If I can watch it like 
as much as LeBron was, used to wear head uh, the headbands, right? Just imagine if he had a little camera in there. And it's angled in. Oh, I got and some then, jokes. And I you had a stabilizer. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Hold on. I'm on. Do it. Do it. Because do it. I got to receive it's a hairline, I'm going to do the joke for so you. So do I. Look. I'm, I'm going to do the joke for you. So five years ago with LeBron, we would have had a head on shot. By the time the LeBron. The words of Michael are not the words of the National not Basketball Association or by, Jeff Sanchez. By the time LeBron got rid of that head, man, we would have been looking we into the rafters. It. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't even laughing. <laughs> the Jumbotron, the Raptors. You're not going to play this What's game. What's going on with the game? And cut to me laughing. I'm not even laughing. Can't we can't, can't see. see. Can't see. Can't see. Nope. Stupid. But another quick question, though. What was that? Was that a bird? What's that? Uh-uh. Okay, Next question. I, okay, but I'm saying seriously. With like augmented reality and virtual reality, I yeah. think it would be dope to, because you know, now they have it where they can do the senses and like the impact. Right. I think it would be dope that if I could watch the game, something hits me or something triggers a sense where I could feel you know what it's funny. Going there's, there's a company that I ran into two years ago. It wasn't ComplexCon, it was one of these things in LA. And there is some technology like that that, um, that you could basically feel. In, I mean, I think Nike has, in our New Jerseys, we have something like that. But there's another level of that where mm. you literally, if you miss a free throw, it gives you like a little, <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Wow. Like you're sitting in the stands and it gives you a shot because he missed a free throw. If it goes straight in, you know, it tickles you. I don't know. One of our friends Gosh. now, um, <laughs> one of our close friends, Rodney, Rodney, that has listener, I know he has his software, I believe, is um, he's up in Ohio. But I know with some of the stadiums there, he has it where when the player, when the fans are there, because he does basically high frequency audio sounds that mm -hmm. send signals directly to your phone. And I know you guys are sending more content to the end users when they're in the in the uh, stadium. Absolutely. How has that been going for you as far as brand development and just building other companies within that? I mean, there's nothing like having that instant reaction while they're in mm -hmm. the arena, experiencing our game. Like that's. You know, you sell, you you open their eyes to something that they probably weren't thinking about looking at. Um, I'll be lying to you if I tell you I knew numbers, like how's it? I, but it's doing well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Talking about being in the game and, you know, fans' perspectives and what they want. So, protesting. Oh. Ooh. I'm going in. <laughs> okay. Well, damn. Let's just get yes. to the liquor. Yeah. Bye so, you know, that's been, a, you know, a lot of people have been comparing what the NBA, how the NBA handled it versus the NFL. And you, from a content Much perspective... Better. Right. How did, you know, give us that, that inside, as much as you can, about the strategy and the perspective and what you all decided to do versus, and not that you were looking at the other mm. leagues to see how you wanted to handle it, but what was important to you all? Toya went deep. You must have had some good coffee this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, like I said, I like to keep it funky. Okay. Um, give it to I, us. I wasn't involved in those conversations. Right, right. right. You but, were maybe in the but, execution but, no, 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 of no. it. And, and. I'm just saying that to give full clarity. Uh -huh. um, but I do believe, in my opinion, is we handled it great. Our leadership, all the way from the top, mm -hmm. you know, worked with the players hand on to make sure that the messages that we relayed to everyone were a partnership right. together and they were both involved, both sides, the union and the league. Mm -hmm. um, really, that's all I can say. You know okay. what I mean? Like, I think we handled it really well. Um, we, you know, want our players to be individuals and kind yeah. of express how they're feeling in good times and in bad times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we had any issues with anyone feeling like they weren't able to express what was going on in the climate. Yeah. You know, so. Jeff, and, and really quick, just quick question is for, I want to know. Did, how did that trickle down to you and your role in the NBA, if at all? Did it? I mean, we were all, you know, we were all involved in discussions internally, like, as staff. You know, uh -huh. like, if we, if we were, doors were open, and, like, if you have grievances, if you need to talk about this, wow. you know, please come in from, all, again, all the way from the top. Like, yeah. we need to know how open you guys are policy. feeling. Open door policy. Absolutely. Talk about um, yeah, so I never, look, it's... We're in a crazy place, right? There's a lot going on. I never felt as a Latino kid from the Bronx that my voice wasn't heard 
mm. at the NBA during all of this. And right? that's so important. So, so Could, important. Do you think maybe with so many players and now I would say some of your old school players that are coming back into the league, do you think maybe that has an influence? Because, it, you know, you have a lot of your older players, you know, Isaiah Thomas, you have a lot of influence. Do you think maybe that was something that influenced the basis of how things are looked at? Um, no, nah, I just think from the leadership, you know, I think we were, everyone was clear that we needed to discuss this mm -hmm. as a unit between players and league and kind of see where everyone stands and then take it from there. Gotcha. Like, I, I think, yes, players had a lot to do with it, but I think the leadership also had the other 50%. Now, you said you were into music. Mm -hmm. So how did you go from music to this and how much of your music career, because this is, of course, called Tech Beats and Bites for a reason. How much of your music career influenced or played a part into the skill set that you brought over into the NBA? All of it. Um, it's the same hustle. Mm -hmm. um, but I answer your first question. I got to the NBA from the music industry. Um, I was working for Sean Combs. Oh, okay. um, bad boy. As his, perso love. as his personal assistant. <laughs> um, and I can imagine how that was. It was, it was the best <laughs> and it was the craziest yeah, I, I, <laughs> all right. at once. Did um, you have to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge and do all of that kind of stuff? Nah, 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 nah. nah. I, hey. Hold on, what years were you there? I like to use moments in his life to capture the years because I'm horrible with okay. numbers. Uh, marathon and Broadway mm. play. Like the two okay. year, 2004, yeah. early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, so like a two year window there. Was that before Fonsworth or bo after? Fon after. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fonsworth's my man. Yeah. Good dude. Um, so no, I just he should have kept on making music. By the way, I thought his music was dope. Dope. He's just a dope individual. Yeah. What um, is he doing now? Sorry to sidebar, but what is he doing now? He's actually hosting uh, Lift Every Voice on uh, BET every Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's my brother, too. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just saw a lane and an opportunity uh, through some mutual friends that were working at the NBA. Um, and I think anyone that's ever worked with Bad Boy and Mr. Combs, you have a window. <laughs> um, Is that and, based off of tolerance or just operation? Nah, I think it's... it's <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Like I think he also builds you to go get it, you know? And mm. there's always an open door policy to come back, That's you know, and it's like, go, go, go get your you. career, go get your money, go, go learn. Right. Something yeah, you else. Skills to go do something bigger. Yeah. So, and, and I think, you know, it's, we're a family. We're a bad boy family. Like people that used to work there, people that still work there. Um, I still lean on them a lot for advice and work and, you know, we work together on a lot of things. So anyway, long story short. Yeah. I made, I saw a lane, I jumped in, um, and Yes, every day. I, I like to think that I transferred my skills from there to here and kind of created this space at the NBA that didn't exist before I got there. And it has everything to do with Uptown Records when I was a street mm. promoter to Bad Boy. I'm sorry, I'm going to go Uptown Records, Luke Records right. to Bad Boy. So wow. everything I learned from Luther Campbell and Sean Combs I used at the NBA. I saw Luke. What was that? Saturday, I drew his face, his logo. Mm -hmm. I drew that logo for him. He didn't remember me because when I used to work for him, I used to have dreads. Wow. But when I told him about the logo, he remembered me. So, Did he, did I, he pay you? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you did it for love. In, in knowledge. For, for, the right. base, for the basis of respect, I'm going to say he paid me more than I could ever receive in return to him. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Luther Campbell was ahead of his time. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. People don't know the money sacrifices he makes to do stuff for this community because he could have left and went to L.A. There's certain places he could have went uh, and just took his career to another level. But he was very, very respectful of making sure that Miami was recognized for what it was worth. So I think the fact that, you yeah. know, it took him over 30 something years to get recognized. Um, yeah. I mean, you you saw it at that speech, you know, yeah. from mm -hmm. BT, like you he, you can see the emotion honest. in him. You can see he if meant If anyone it. knows Luther Campbell, you've heard that speech ten times. Right. In one way or the other. Yeah. So I so think he, that's he a was big holding thing. that. Cool. So we're going to do a little thing, the quick six. I mean, honestly, I think this is one of our more knowledgeable conversations because a lot of people don't understand 
NBA is just more than a game. I mean, I know you guys do a lot with community service. I know there's a lot that you're doing as an influencer, so this means a lot to have you here because mm -hmm. our whole point of putting together this content was, and we pivoted Digital Grass this year because when you first came up, you asked us how long have we been doing this. And in January, as a company, we all made the decision that conferences and workshops wasn't enough. Seminars, right? yeah. Yeah, it was, everybody was doing that. But having conversations with people to make them humans and to let people see, hey, they're like us, would actually touch more people. And I think collectively as a group, we could all say we've had a higher impact. Yeah. Because instead of reaching 20, 100, or 200 people every other month doing an event, we can now reach 600 to 1,000 people every other day with our content. Nice. So, 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 and and you know, I'd like to say if you're not learning, you're dying. So, absolutely, 100% agree. So, you walk into your office, had a great day. There's a theme song that represents you. What will we be listening to? Oh God, damn it! I should have <laughs> knew that was coming. <laughs> Tap into your music roots. Tap into your music roots. Uh, God damn it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I'm going to say... As much as people watch our videos, they always forget the hot I sense. know, man. It's like the beat. All right, I'm just going to go with like a Mob Deep record. Just go Dope. anything Mob Deep because I'm hip-hop to the core. and We'll it, take it. Mm -hmm. It Give might not goods. represent my day, but it might. I don't know what he's going to play. Give up the goods. Get your money. Mm, no. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, no. Not right no. now. No. Survival no. of the fittest? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got We that. got Amen corner over here. <laughs> we got that. Give up the goods is too aggressive. I'm not that guy. Okay. <laughs> not every day. Right. Nah, 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 nah. So what was the most pivotal advice you received in your career that really sort of made you say, huh, I'll change direction? <laughs> it, it, I'm going to bring it back to Miami and then Luke. Uh, I don't even know why this one popped up, but. It's, you know, life, what did he say in one of his many rants? Uh, you get a confirmation for it. It was somebody didn't give him a confirmation for his flight, and he didn't get on a flight because he didn't have a confirmation. And he was like, <laughs> in life, everything's a confirmation. When you die, they give you a number. Your birth certificate, like the death certificate has a number. It's a confirmation that you're dead. <laughs> That was it. That was it. I was like, what? And it impacted your life how? <laughs> Basically, it wasn't about that, but it was about, yo, don't have me out here looking crazy. Give me Get confirmation. Get me a confirmation number or I'm not moving, fam. Now that explains your extra two emails. What time I need to be here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, no, I, need, I need information, fam. <laughs> right. I, I, can't, I can't move without information. I got you. Right? We're in the information age. This was before the information age. Right, right. This, <laughs> but that's definitely something Luke would say is... Give me the Even when he was mad, he tried to drop knowledge. It was a jewel. I mean, I, right. I didn't get it then, but I got you it, get it now. now right? Absolutely. All That's right. cool. So, oh, let's see. If you could implement any new technology into the NBA right now, what would it be? Uh, new tech. You know, this is a... Nah, because we're probably going to do that already. Like I was, it's, I was thinking tickets and apps and everything comes on your but phone anyway. But you can anyway. tell us, that's fine. No, no, no. It's, I, really, you know what I would like to see? I don't even know if it's a techie thing. It's more of a television thing. Okay. I've always had like a, a dream that you can kind of, we won't do this, but that a secondary audio, you know how you can have Spanish as your secondary audio and you can watch the game Spanish. I've always wanted to hear the game as it's happening on the court, like literally. Mm -hmm. Me too. Literally. Yes. <laughs> but. That's like that body cam. You have the option. Without, because, give me you know, on the if court. You, are we you, talking about not hearing it without beeping stuff out? Like well, just look, raw? I think, no, it should I think, be raw. I think in the essence of protecting our players and <laughs> us, you know, and not just. Not the same. I want that. No, no, no. <laughs> but look, look, again, I don't even think this will happen. But, you know, you have to be a, of a certain age to buy that package, right? So you can hear it that way. 18 plus. Yeah. And. You know, and, and there's already a delay, you know, so we can still monitor it and make sure. But, yeah, this should be foul language because whatever. That's how it goes down. I agree because that's some of the best footage when they, like, show the players talking. Those, or just like, the stories. Those like, I, I've gotten good. to know a lot of our players and our legends. And some of the best stories are the stories of Dr. J and Dominique mm. Wilkins. Like, the talking the, on the court. The yeah. shit you don't hear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I agree. So, I would pay for that. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I that's think, the value mm -hmm. of courtside seats is yeah. hearing that kind of and, thing. And, and I know that we're working on something visually 
that gives you the the vantage point of the players. So that's coming. See, that brings me back to Ahmad Rashad when he used to do his little shows on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, That's when I hear you say that, it's like he was kind of going. There's a thing, like if you go to an NBA game and you get you're blessed enough to sit really close, the way our players move, like when you watch it live, it's insane. So like there's angles that I know are coming that you get to really watch it as it's happening on the court, not that high high slash or whatever camera that we use. Gotcha. So because you talked about creating your own lane and your own sort of like, um, profet- you know, your own specialty within the business, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to innovate within a corporation? Mm. You know what? I'm going to give them advice that I heard, I think I heard on one of your shows. Okay. Um, find, find the problem and solve it. Yeah, that's something we Did said. I hear that on one yeah. of your shows? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, if you don't, if you're not learning, you're dying. I, you know, so I learned. Best way to make money is just find a problem. And find a, a find a problem and make find a solution. Yeah. Because if you have that problem, there's a good chance other people have Tech it. Tech beats and bites plug. If Jeff mm-hmm. can learn yeah. from us, you can too. Right. So I, that would be my simplest advice. Like, you know, yeah. That'll work. We'll take it. 2023. What's the perfect headline in the Miami Herald for the NBA or Jeff Sanchez? Um, see, that's a loaded question because I am also a Heat fan. 2023, what is the perfect headline for Jeff Sanchez to see? Oh, <laughs> me, not yeah. the Heat. No, not you. Oh, sorry. I thought you said the Heat. Miami Herald, not the Heat. Oh, Miami Herald. Yes, sir. Uh, the perfect headline in the Miami Herald 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a Democrat in the White House? I don't know. <laughs> no, that's, that's about as real as it gets. I, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. Like, this ain't... Hey. You said you, Jeff Sanchez. You, you answered the question correctly. The NBA. Right. She'll ask you the other one. <laughs> if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, wow. Um, I would have dinner with my father. He's not with us anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to bring anybody down, but... That's who I would have dinner Denver, with. There's, yeah. there's still some fatherly advice that I could use. Oh. That's dope. No, that's cool. Yeah. Self-born, you want to yep. close us out with? So, yes, yes. Since your baby is All-Star Weekend, and that's your Super Bowl that you say it, right? Yes. You know who else is Super Bowl that is? Every <laughs> side piece, thought. Oh, Jesus. Don't do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, Don't do it. Harlot. Scarlet, Jezebel, <laughs> Trollope, all of them. As the only lady That's up here all, on this stage. It's the All Star Week. It. No, no. So I gotta. I, I want to know a story. You ain't no 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 names. No, no. Here, here's here's it's 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 a little smart too. Go ahead. Tell me about a story that affected your career and changed how you do your job day to day. I don't know how both of those make sense. Like, I don't, those don't even... I don't think they do, but that first part was necessary for self born Yeah, he <laughs> just wanted to get that out. He, he had, had to, to get say that, that part. No, 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 a story. A story and how... A story. Something you've experienced in your baby planning that weekend. Uh-huh. And something you experienced that you took in, and then it affected how you do your job and how You're you plan. You're saying because knowing the crazy that comes yeah, with he's the exactly. weekend. Knowing okay. how crazy that weekend is right. and the things and that And not making it too specific. It doesn't right. have to be too specific, but tell me. You know. What did you see and you was like, I need to adjust X, Y, and Z? Right. I'm going to keep it real. Like, keep I, it real. That's I, exactly I, the point. I, I, no, no, no. no. I, I'm going to keep it so boring real. Like, okay. There's okay. nothing that I saw that was so ratchet that <laughs> you know affected my career. Like The stuff that's affected my career at All Star is... You know, it's this is corny, but last year having uh, Caleb from uh, Stranger Things play in the celebrity game, really, and my man Mario, that I've known since third grade, was his manager. Like that was a moment for me, like to oh, get we need that to get kid. Caleb on here. To get that kid in a celebrity game. I know you're not Caleb. I'm saying. <laughs> to get that kid we in got the game. That. We want Caleb. <laughs> right. He's a good kid. Work. Okay. So that. Stuff like that, you know, it's it's the the positive stuff that happens at All Star Weekends that that keep me. Going yeah, it didn't have to be like, ratchet. No, no, I'm, and I'm keeping that was good. I literally work good. 16 hours and then I go to the hotel and then I go hang out and have a drink with my boys somewhere, but it's never in that club. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Got it. That's good. Stay away. No, it's good. Yeah, it's dope. So, as 
somebody we're we're doing influencer content. You handle influencer content. Uh, I think one thing I want to do a little different to close today out. Mm-hmm. What would be some words of advice that you would like to leave with Digital Grass as we continue to influence and try to educate people in social issues, technology, entrepreneurship? What's some leaving advice that you would like to leave with us to help us go to that next level as 2018 comes? Um, continue what you're doing, mm-hmm. right? Like, sure. I mean, I don't think that's... Noted. That's not a no, that's a no brainer, right? You guys aren't going to stop, um, whether you have two hundred or twenty. Well, this weather right? we might consider <laughs> slowing down, but okay, we won't um, stop. Right. You, Holiday season coming up. You guys are definitely on to something, and I think the conversation thing is needed. Um, you're going to find more innovators and more influencers through this, right? Um, and don't stop. And 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 you know. I would tap into more of your guests to bring, you know, like almost challenge them. And I'm speaking for myself. Bring to, somebody else to, to the bring show. somebody else in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like each one, refer each, each one bring one. Yeah. Right. Refer. So who's your referral? Give us, uh, give us your top three that you would like to see on Tech Beat some bites. Yes. I think you should have Amaris Jones. Okay. Uh-oh. Amaris. Right. Did she she's here. She's she escaped too. Um, uh, um, I would, I would say. Uh, my man Jason Brown from Pepsi. My man Jason's LA dude, uh, sports marketing, okay. slick dude, That'll be a good like one. knows his stuff. Um, so he I'm, does like brand partnerships, yeah, yeah, like he's celebrity my, he's endorsements. My counterpart on the Pepsi side. Oh, They're cool. our partner. Um, so, so Amherst, Jason Brown, Jason Brown, and Stanley Lumax. That's the challenge. Stanley Lumax works for Steve Stout at Translation. Uh, That'll we, work. Oh, I don't know if I formerly at Nike. <laughs> What you mean? It's all in good fun. He could come and sit yeah. in the chat. Translation yeah, so just pretty much dropped their own record label. I mean, they popping. That's right. why he should be on the Stout plane. is doing some big things. But yeah, that's what I would say. I would say challenging. Hey, guests. Steve Stout, your logo is real close to our logo. Just want you to know that. Uh, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> you can't be shooting shots and then we trying to get him on. Nah, it's a dope shots. logo. That I know what I'm just logo? saying. Like just, you want a piece of that? Like, we've like, been around like, since 2006. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I've been sending them that, send them that Mac, uh, that, uh, that that same letter house of Mac got from McDonald's. We see you. We can coexist. <laughs> almost a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah. Almost. We just want you to know we appreciate it. Almost. <laughs> but, but don't drop. I don't that know if a. you want that smoke. <laughs> no, nah, not at all. Right. Can't afford it. <laughs> but we got a trademark. <laughs> so, um, really appreciate your knowledge. Really appreciate your energy. And to be somebody from Miami and to come back and support us, um, mm-hmm. more than anything, that means a lot. You know, uh, today I jokingly made a post about, you know, I see you not liking and you not commenting, but I know you watching. It means a lot when people that we look up to are paying attention. And I know you reached out to our man, Chef Teach. Uh, shout out to World Famous House of Mac. Now on 1216 Washington on the beach, you know, Absolutely. making so major beat. moves. So thank you for coming out on the show, being another superhero in our community. We salute you, and um, we'll see you all next week for our end-of-the-year party. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, our supporters. Can I, can I say a, th- a thank you? or, or Absolutely. Do I get to say anything? I'm going to let you close us. Go. But uh, <laughs> shout out to our supporters. <laughs> the mic is all yours. <laughs> shout out to our supporters, uh, the Knight Foundation, for supporting us this year and allowing us to change our vision and make this happen. But we are going to leave the closing word with Mr. Jeff Sanchez. Uh, our last in no, interviewee no, for the year. No, yes. no, no, no. You are going to have the closing word. I just wanted no, to no, say no. thank you to you guys, um, you know, and, and teach at uh, World Famous House of Mac. Uh, he's asked me to do this for a while, and the schedule just never worked. But this was something that's important to me. I am, you know, I consider myself Miami and New Yorkin. I'm a little bit of both. I got a lot of family here. My daughter is here. Um, but this is important to me. Like, it, again, if you're not learning, you're dying. I like to think that I learned a couple of things here tonight, and hopefully couple of you did um and this is the type of stuff we got to do right like you got to kind of support those that are affecting the culture and you guys are doing that so That's you cool. have the closing word i think you just dropped the mic i said we close it out y'all we'll see you next week but <laughs> <laughs> right nice sexual chocolate <laughs> this amen corner has been hot all night so yes good Thank times y'all no it was good thank you for joining us peace peace, peace.